so many sense and shapes and size, and they are interdependent on each other to make them the whole. I would like to add, with your permission, Mr. President, a fifth dimension, that, and that is the support we receive from our brothers and sisters, the Christian community around the world, who are also indispensable to our nation. I am sure that what we have experienced so far has given us all a food for thought. And I would like to call now Mr. Jerry Johnson, the head of the NRB, to say a few words and he will thank President Rivlin on behalf of all of us for graciously inviting us to the President House and thank you very much. Greetings from National Religious Broadcasters to His Excellency, to the Government Press Office, Nitsan, thank you. Yeah. And fellow Christian media leaders. NRB, National Religious Broadcasters, is the only media association of its kind, Christian media leaders advancing biblical truth promoting media excellence, and defending free speech. We have over a thousand members, but one of those members has over a hundred stations, Salem, with um, people like Dennis Prager and Michael Medved on the air, speaking up for Israel. Another one of those is BOT, the BOT Network, with over a hundred members. American Family Radio, all of us, proclaiming the Christian message but also the friendship message to Israel. Your Excellency, I have in my hand here three documents, resolutions, passed by the last three meetings of the National Religious Broadcasters. And I'm going to give those to you. And as the head of state, I hope you'll put them in the official records. So that some great leader a hundred years from now can't sleep at night, he says, bring out the records, <laughs> and uh, he sees national religious broadcasters. What good can we do for them, you know? <laughs> but here, <laughs> yes. but I want to read one of those, the last one. I want you to see how we feel, this group feels about you and what's going on. Whereas Israel's history including the creation and continued existence of the modern state of Israel, reveals the providential hand of God and his commitment to fulfilling his promises in his holy word, the Bible. Whereas the Bible records God's promise to Abraham, the patriarch of Israel, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Whereas on May 14, 1948, the Israeli Declaration of Independence was proclaimed by David Ben-Gurion, head of the Jewish Agency, and soon to become the modern state of Israel's first prime minister. And whereas U.S. President Harry S. Truman recognized the new state of Israel immediately and Israel continues to share a special relationship with the United States as nations committed to freedom and democratic governance that respects the rule of law and the rights of minorities. Whereas, since its establishment in 1948 to the present day, Israel has faced violence, hostility, and existential threats from powerful state and non-state actors in the Middle East. And whereas the United Nations and its committees have a history of unfairly targeting and condemning Israel, and whereas the Jerusalem Embassy Act of 1995 established in U.S. law that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, and that...
and that the U.S. Embassy should be moved there, a provision that has been waived by U.S. Presidents every six months for approximately 20 years. And whereas U.S. President Donald Trump has affirmed that the United States does indeed recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and has set in motion a plan to relocate the U.S. Embassy as its rightful, in its rightful place there, and whereas Christians are instructed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls, security within your towers. For my brothers and companions' sake, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. Therefore, be it resolved, NRB celebrates the 70th anniversary of Israel's independence in the modern era. And NRB calls on its members to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and all Israel. Therefore, be it resolved, NRB calls on the United States to honor Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to stand steadfastly by Israel, even as others malign, abandon, or attack her. Approved by the Board of Directors, February 27, 2018. And that was before the official act. We were nudging them on to do it. Well, a few words about His Excellency. We read about a family in Genesis 12. And uh, that family was to be a blessing to all the nations. As a Christian, um, we've experienced that through Jesus who came from the Lion of Abraham. But I want to tell you about another family. The year is 1809. Seventy years before the first great wave of Zionist immigrants to Israel. The man's name is Hillel Rivlin. Coming from Lithuania, the first family in Jewish family in what was then called the Ottoman Palestinian Empire, we know it is Israel. It is Israel. That family, now 35,000 people in Israel, Supreme Court leaders, journalists, Actors, comedians, historians, scholars, and particularly a man named Yosef Yol Rivla, the father of the president. He was an Aramaic scholar, a classic scholar, an Orientalist. He translated the Quran into Arabic. He translated uh, into Hebrew, excuse me. He translated Arabian Nights into Hebrew. <laughs> it was that kind of a man who had a son who would understand the Jewish world, the Muslim world, and the Christian world. That's the important thing. And to speak fluent Arabic, Reuven Rivlin served in the Israeli Defense Force he was the leader of the Beitar football team and remembered fondly for that. Chair, on the board at El Al, Minister of Communications, two times elected, Speaker of the Knesset, and then President of the State of Israel. And there are two things I want to say about him that make him a fine president. He is committed to the defense of Israel been very clear about that. Statehood. Even the greater Israel. He is a Zionist, a Likudnik. He is a native. And that's important for a president to believe in his country. But he also believes that can come with democracy. Openness. The right tone. He's been willing to speak up for the minorities. I want to thank you, sir, for speaking up against the Armenian genocide many years ago in Turkey. But you have defended the rights of minorities here, and as minorities, Christians in this region, we're very grateful for your 
openness and spirit. He has a fatherly reputation, uh, an open reputation, and it's a beautiful thing. So now just a couple of words. I take the first one from your scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures, to the exiles. And I mean this. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not prefer Jerusalem above my chief joy. Well, you're no longer exiles in this land. And um, in the memory of your father, who loved poetry, a verse. Bring me my bow of burning gold. Bring me my arrows of desire. Bring me my spear, O clouds unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. We shall not cease from battle strife, nor shall the sword sleep in our hand till we have built Jerusalem in this fair and pleasant land. Ladies and gentlemen, let's stand, honor, and hear His Excellency, the President of the State of Israel. CEO of the GPO, senior journalist, and what a senior journalist from time to time I watch you, and I am not only amazed, I'm wondering, 100 million people who are listening to us, to you, distinguished guests. Dear friends from all over the world, I know, I know that for many of you, this is not the first time, so I want to welcome you, to welcome you all back to Israel and back to Jerusalem, our eternal home. Thank you. Thank you for coming to the Christian Media Center. Ruchim Abayim, we say in Hebrew, God bless all of you and welcome. May your visit be blessed. I was the communication minister of Israel, and I'm a Jerusalemite, and I welcome you as the president of Israel and as a Jerusalemite. And I can assure you that from here in Jerusalem, to talk to God is a local phone, so you can say <laughs> I also want to thank everyone at the government, press office, Nitzan, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and at the Ministry of Jerusalem and Heritage for arranging this important conference. Dear friends, our roots in this city go back long away, and long ways away. My own family, as we have heard, has been in Jerusalem for more than 14 generations. I am seventh generation as the descendant of Father Hillel, Rabbi Hillel, 
the uh, cousin of the Vilna Gaon. And uh, in Vilna, Vilna was described as uh, Jerusalem Delita. And I must say that uh, as a Jerusalem, son of Jerusalem, son of the son of Jerusalem, we are here since 1809, not because it was 1809, but it, it, because according to the Jewish calendar, it was the year of three letters in Hebrew, Taf, Kuf, Ayin, that every Hebrew speaker will tell you that those three letters make sense in one word, Ka. And Ka is sound, blow, sound the great horn to proclaim freedom. And my ancestors have said to the pupils and to the members of family, why should we pray every day three times to God to return us back to Jerusalem? Let's go to, to Jerusalem because that in the year Tka, in the year Tafkufayim, which was, according to the Gregorian calendar, the year 1809, the Messiah is going to come to Jerusalem. And it is impossible, impossible, that the Rivlin family will not welcome him. <laughs> so we came to Jerusalem because we believe believed the Messiah was about to come, and the Messiah could not come without being there, asked to welcome him. Some people say that uh, our family sleep till today with their shoes on, because unfortunately he didn't come. He didn't come yet. Just in order to be sure that if he will come during the night, we are ready to welcome him. In, in 1809, it's just a short time ago. Last week, dear friends, we found a, a writing on a stone here in Jerusalem. It is from the first century BCE, 2,100 years old. It has a name on it, Hanania ben Dodalos, from Jerusalem. It says Jerusalem in Hebrew letters that any first gladiator in Israel could read. It's the oldest item we have ever found with Jerusalem written as we read it today. It was found when building the new high-speed railway that links Jerusalem to Tel Aviv. It's not prepared yet, but it, will, it would be prepared in no time. Many, maybe a little more than no time. <laughs> a truly, but the written is a truly remarkable find that links our past to our future. Something else remarkable happened in Jerusalem this year, as you have said before. More than 50 years after Jerusalem was liberated, reunited as a capital of Israel, and on the 70th anniversary of the establishment of the State of Israel, it was delight that the Embassy of the United States of America move to Jerusalem. Others have already followed, and we hope more, we will, more will come. I say it loud and clear, without hesitation. Thank you, President Trump. <laughs> 70 years ago, and 70 years on, Israel is now a modern state inspired by these, its ancient history. Right here in Jerusalem, technology companies that make the world a better place stand on ground where the stories in the Bible happened. The word 
of the prophet Yehezkel, that Israel will prosper and flourish are coming true. But we will have much to do and much more to do. The, new, the Jews have been majority in Jerusalem since 1850. That when the first neighborhood, a Jewish neighborhood, was out of the walls of Jerusalem, of ancient Jerusalem, being built, among others, by my family. But we have always lived alongside Muslims and Christians all together as Jerusalemites. As it was said, my father, my, my father that was a scholar, a professor, Joseph Yoel Givin, but he was also not only a scholar and professor, he knew something about really faith and about the way how to worship God. Decided his life and dedicated his life uh, to translation of the Quran into Hebrew so that the Jews could understand our Muslim neighborhoods and friends better. I meet with religious leaders of all faiths to make sure we understand one each other. Later this year, I will travel to the Vatican actually within a few, few weeks, to meet His Holiness, Pope Francis. As a Jew and, a, and as a Jewish and democratic state, Israel will, will always protect the freedom of religion and the holy sites for all those of faith, however they worship God. You can be assured that one of the most fascinating things happening in Israel today is the development of Qasr al Yahud, a baptism site. The site where Jesus was baptized and the monasteries nearby. This is an exceptional development project and I am proud to promote it and I'm sure that within one year it would be all ready. Now we have more than 800,000 Christians who are coming from all around the world in order to have the ability to bath in the Jordan water and in the Jordan River at the same place that, the jo that Johanan the Baptist he was meeting Jesus. Already, it is one of the main sites children, for Christians of all denominations who come in growing numbers. We are working with the Christian world as a whole, and we hope that one day you will all be able to go safely and to follow the whole route from Jerusalem to Nazareth via Jericho and bath in the waters of the river Jordan. Dear friends, <laughs> These are difficult times of our region and for our region. The war in Syria continues and Iran continues to spread hatred and extremism <coughs> here and across the world. The Christian communities of our region are paying a terrible price. Israel is working with our allies around the world for, to fight terror and extremism to bring peace to our <coughs> region. By coming here, all of you, you are showing your care deeply for Israel and for its people. And that you share, you share my hope that peace will come to the whole world. I believe that it is possible. It is possible. I believe that we can build understanding between Israelis and Palestinians. I believe we can build confidence between the two people as long as they will understand that the Jewish people have returned to the only fatherland of the Jewish people. 
I believe more than anything that Israelis and Palestinians are not doomed to live together. We are disdained to live together. Dear friends, thank you. Thank you again for coming to Jerusalem. Please take home with you a message of peace from the Holy Land and a love for Israel. Even more importantly, come back soon, even next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the president. We will have a chance to take a photo, a photo with the president. Please have a seat. The last two lines, please stand up. And the same to the camera. It's the president. I'll get you all the best for your